Almost there, almost there. It's just gonna take a second longer to set up and I just hit the record button so we should be all good to start hi everyone Sami Abusad um, with you live from the strategic day trader room if you're tuning in on social media be sure to uh, hit the like button if you find benefit in today's presentation be be sure to also uh, click on the link in the description if you want to join us um, in the room we have an open house this week a uh, couple more days and it'll be over so be sure to check us out uh, if you have any questions reach out to customer service my email is also at the bottom just sammy at t3live.com there it is if you have questions for me feel free to reach out as well um, let's go ahead and get started before I do I have to share with you the standard required disclaimer to let you know that trading is risky and that whatever we discuss is for educational purposes only all right but uh, with that said we'll go ahead and get started so the moving averages is the along with volume is are the only indicators that I ever ever use in my trading now uh, some would argue volume is not an indicator because it's a, a true representation of the interest in the stock, the amount of buying and selling in the stock that's happening. And I would agree with that to some extent. It's not an indicator. Um, moving averages are definitely an indicator or indicators, right? Depending on the moving average that you use, but um, or depending on how many moving averages that you use. Uh, but I exclusively use the 20 and the 200 on smaller time frames the intraday time frames one minute two minute five minute and 15 i also use the eight period moving average but it's really not that important the eight is mostly for gaps at the open it's obviously faster than the 20 so it catch so it catches up to price a lot uh, a lot faster than the the 20 does uh, so so that's what I use it for mostly for gaps at the open but the two main moving averages that I have on every chart are the 20 and the 200 both simple simple moving averages okay simple moving averages. so let's start with the 20 which is the more important of the two is the more important of the two um, and it and because it's more important and because it trends and moves reacts to price uh, a lot more um, so it's a lot more sensitive to price because it's the average basically of the last 20 candles rather than the last 200 uh, so it, it reacts it responds uh, it's a lot more sensitive to price movements it it moves a lot and there are many different uses for it first in general moving averages are directional guides that speed up technical analysis of trends so it's a if you know how to use them it's a helpful tool um, to make you um, that speeds up the analysis of trends and charts the color of the moving averages should be consistent across multiple time frames you don't want to have a blue 20 ma on the daily and then a, a black 20 ma on the five minute doesn't make sense so just Whatever color you pick, no problem. Just make sure it's consistent on all uh, time frames. The type of moving average that you use, again, exponential, simple, weighted, whatever it is, does not matter that much at all. But it should also be the same on all time frames. It should be consistent on all on all charts. Moving averages are superior tools in uptrends and downtrends when the stock is trending. In sideways trends, their importance is greatly minimized, except for when the stock is starts to uh, to transition, and I'll show you that later on. Um, this is a chart of Facebook. Um, notice when it was, um, I was looking at to the right here. I'm like Facebook, twenty two dollars. That must be from twenty years ago. From when it went public no uh, that's 220 okay and that's 157 it's just the chart got cut off it looks like so notice when it was in an uptrend it reacts to the moving average so and it, it, the moving average points the direction of the stock e easily without having to analyze it moving average pointing up stock must be in an uptrend moving average pointing down 
stock must be in a downtrend. Most of the time, not always, but most of the time, when the stock is in an uptrend, it, it will stay, the price, price will stay on the other side of the moving average, above it. When it's in a downtrend, it'll stay below it. Okay, sometimes it can poke its head above it or below it a little bit, but most of the time, bullish stocks stay above their rising moving averages, bear stocks stay below it. When it goes sideways like this, that's when F Facebook went sideways, um, it wasn't, uh, you know, it, the moving average was of no use. This is, again, this is 180, it's not, you know, $18. So when the moving average is, is just, um, when the stock is sideways, it's of no use, almost. The moving average is of no use, the 20 MA. Uh, so it's, it's mostly useful when it, the stock is, is trending. Exception, when stocks are about to transition, the 20 will start to hug price and curl up, curve up. This is your indication that the stock is about to transition into a stage to uptrend. Here's some examples. You see how stock was coming from a downtrend, like so, right? And then went sideways, moving average was crisscrossing the price. And then right here, right before <coughs> it was supposed to, uh, it was gonna transition higher. Notice how it started to hug price. It halted it and then started to point up and then bam, big pop. Um, okay, so that's the transition A. And again, under the moving average right here, th through the moving average, crisscrossing it, and as the stock was ready to go up, it starts to curl. So it gives you a great heads up that it's about to, to go. So again, hide this, and let me just show you real quick. And you know, without the moving average, you might not be able to spot that the stock is about to transition. But with the moving average, notice how it was starting to point up a little bit. Then that, that should give you a, a heads up that it's about to transition. Again, right here. If we remove the moving average, you might still be able to spot it, but it's much easier with the moving average. Does that make sense? Much easier with that rising 20 MA to see it and that was a transition a and then two bars in a row green bars start going bar by bar in which case out right here okay um and then right here notice again started to point up right before the stock was ready to break out when the price starts to respond to that rising 20 and not go below it like right here going below it below it when it starts to when the moving average starts to halt price from continuing lower, that's when you know it's about to pop. Some of these pops end up becoming, this ends up becoming the low for years to come. Others are just, a, you know, just a multi-bar swing play and that's it. So I use the moving average for the transition A play. This is what, this is called transition A breakout all the time, all the time. There it is. There it is. The stock went to 100 bucks from here, from 18 to 100, almost 100. Okay, notice again how it, it prevented the price from continuing lower, right? From it halted it. Okay, so now the direction. So we we talked about trends, right? They're directional guides that are very helpful when the stock is trending. When it's sideways, they're not useful except when the stock or the market is about to transition. Is about to transition. Now the direction of the 20, a rising 20 represents positive market action or strength. A falling 20 represents m negative market action or weakness. During a strong trend, retracement, retracements tend to halt near the rising moving average. During a strong downtrend, rallies tend to halt near the declining 20 MA. Following penetrations of the 20 MA, pullbacks to the now broken moving average um, become very likely. So when, when the moving average breaks, I'm going to show you in a minute, um, then it, pullbacks to the moving average become really likely. Notice again, off the moving average, beautiful. Once it breaks it, it's no good anymore. It loses that, it's like a magnet, right? Or almost like a, almost like a fence. It drops to the fence and then bounces off of it. It drops to that a trampoline bounces off of it. 
But once the trampoline gives way, once a 500-pound <coughs> guy jumps on the trampoline and breaks, guess what? It's, a, it's not going to be useful anymore. Does that make sense? So similar here. Um, so off the 20, and then once it breaks it, it sideways, right? Um, okay, the slope of the 20, the slope or the angle of the 20 is indicative of the strength or the weakness of the underlying stock. Basically, it's indicative of, uh, of the kind of buying that's taking action, how aggressive buyers or sellers are. 45 degree is ideal because it's sustainable. It, the stock can go on and on and on if it's a 45 degree uptrend. When, it, when it's steeper, than 45 degree, it becomes not sustainable. It becomes, basically the stock becomes um, getting bought too quickly, right? And it results in a collapse, oftentimes. If it's uh, not as steep as 45, shallower, like 30 degree or 33 degree, it means it lacks the momentum, it's weak, not really that strong, got it? So 45 degree is ideal, that's 45 degree. When it comes from the bottom left corner of the chart to the upper right corner of the chart so that's 45 degree but notice here you see what's going on you see how it start the stock started to separate also and notice the moving average so that's when it starts to get to accelerate basically and becomes unsustainable this is ipgp was a play last year as a short as a climactic short it never recovered i my only mistake was i didn't keep it long enough that's my only mistake it's what's the price now i don't know if it went back up i don't think so it's at 123 that's how it ended the option it's at 123 today 123 bucks i just checked right so again beautiful when it starts to accelerate it's not sustainable it's that last batch of buyers looking to buy the stock 45 degree gorgeous gorgeous okay that's exactly what you want to find and then short 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 and now it's you know we don't have a, a rally to the declining 20 it's almost just a base but on the other side of the 20 this is it's extremely rare when the trend ends like this by the way it's really rare usually it accelerates right but look, I mean, how many more entries would one want? Would one want? Look how many entries it gave, right? Gorgeous. Be beautiful here, but notice how it went vertical. Not sustainable. 45 degrees is okay, but when it becomes much more than 45 degree, that's it becomes a short. It's like, remember that GSX this morning, but we was hard to borrow? If you look at it, if we look at it, maybe it was in the morning, so you have to look at it on the smaller time frames. Even in the morning, you can't. Let's go to the one minute. But again, was not. So this was steep all along, but do, take a look up there. Ignore the eight, that's the eight. I mean, that is 70 degree. Look at that. So again, if this, this is not 45 degree, this was much steeper than 45. But I mean, this is even steeper right so th and that's why it was a short but again wasn't available otherwise would have been the play of the day today collapsed from 17 to 15 that's two bucks uh, so the same here up 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 and then becomes not sustainable right okay good playing the trend odds are much higher in the direction of the 20 ma when you're playing a stock the odds are in your favor when you when you play with the trend rather than against it okay and the 20 must must be going from the bottom left corner the, to the upper right corner okay when playing long vice versa obviously when playing short price is at or near the 20 ma you don't want it to be too far away from it because if it's far away then it, it's extended remember somebody just asked me about the plce and i said that looks good if it can base. You don't want to be shorting it here far from the 20 to extend it. So you want the, the correct entry almost always originates off the 20 MA. Okay? 
Now, at the open, the first few minutes of the of the day, that if it's a gap, the stock might not be the the twenty MA might not get there before the stock starts to go. That's why, excuse me, that's why I use the eight. That's actually precisely why I use the eight. So price is at or near the twenty, not far from it. The twenty MA is not crisscrossing price; it's not going through it. Uh, is there an example of, of a stock that's crisscrossing price? For example, let's just say I wanted. Remember the ADI was on my list as a short watch. See it right here. It was too strong, but here's the sell setup. But notice now it's crisscrossing it. It's going through the twenty. Then it's no good. For me, it's no good. If it was really that weak of a stock, then it wouldn't be going above it, above the twenty. Does that make sense? Wouldn't be crisscrossing it. Especially true when it comes to bases. If you have a stock that's basing and you're looking to play a breakout, let's say here's the base, you're looking to play a breakout. Um, no, here's the base. Let's say the stock is basing and then the moving average catches up, but instead of breaking out, the stock continues to base. You don't want to be playing that now, long. Here, it often fails. If it was so bullish, it would have broken out as soon or b even before the 20 caught up. So you don't want it to be crisscrossing price. The, tw the 200 MA must be below price, not above it. Um, somebody actually sent me an email about this or sent customer service an email who forwarded it to me. In here I say, you know, that price needs to be above the 200 MA when playing long. Obviously that's not 100% of the time. When a stock has a transition A, a setup like we saw before, like here, 100% of the time it's going to be below the 200. Does that make sense? But if you're playing an uptrend, a stock that's already in a well-established uptrend, yes, you want it to be above the 200. If you're playing a stock that's just starting the uptrend here, yeah, it's going to be below the 200, so that's okay. Does that make sense? I'm talking more about a stock that's already in a well-established uptrend. You don't want that to be below the 200 because if it's below the 200, the 200 calculates the average price of the last 200 bars, which means if it's below the 200, it means it's not that bullish. It's not as bullish as you think it is. Does that make sense? Price should be above the 20 and above the 200 if the stock is, is, in, in, is in a well-established uptrend. The correct entry, this is, you might want to highlight this. You might want to like, you know, put it on your monitor. Never forget it. I'm not even kidding. Price, the correct entry is almost always at or near the rising 20 MA. Or if you're playing short, the declining 20 MA. Does that make sense? If you're a trend trader, this is a, for when it comes to entries, this is your Bible almost, right? The entry needs to be at the rising 20 or at the decline 20 or very close to it not far away from it all right however we don't enter because price is at the 20 we have to have a pattern also okay we have to have a pattern so if the price is at the 20 and it has there's no pattern there's no play then i wouldn't play it okay additional uses the 20 can also be used to expedite expedite the scanning process for example, if you're thinking the market is, bu is turning bullish, you want to play long, you can actually program your platform a lot of times. I mean, I have TC2000 running in the background right now, this platform, uh, and I can easily, oops, uh, w whatever, t everybody knows, not everybody, but most people know what TC2000 looks like. This is it, TC2000. I can easily and quickly uh, program TC2000 to look up stocks, all US common stocks, whatever parameters I want, but one of the parameters that I often use when I'm starting to turn bullish on the market is I say find me stocks that are trending above their tw rising 20 period moving average. Just like that. Bam! I get a list. So it helps me when I want to find bullish stocks or bear stocks, but in, in general because I know that if the stock is above, if the stock has a rising 20, it, and price needs to be above it. So I can scan really quickly, look through, looking at charts, like really quickly, like so, just by using the moving average. So it definitely 
expedites the scanning process. Uh, it helps determine the stock's extension. The far, if the stock is far from the 20, then its extension means overbought, oversold. So the more extended the stock is, the more overbought it is. Does that make sense? So to determine the stock's extension, locate support or resistance, because in an uptrend, the 20 MA it acts as support. Again, it acts as a trampoline. I don't want to say it acts as a concrete wall, but more as a trampoline in an uptrend. In a downtrend, uh, the other way around, obviously. It acts as a resistance. Uh, to, to help you determine if there's price divergence, sometimes I can see that there, the stock is diverging w from the moving average, and I, at that point, then I, I know the trend is probably in trouble, probably going to be over soon. So f to spot divergence. You can spot divergence also by using an indicator like the MACD indicator, MACD indicator, that you can spot divergence. Uh, but why why would I want to use another indicator when I can just spot the divergence on, off the t based on the 20, right? Anticipate reversals for sure, right? When the stock gets too far away from the 20, it snaps back to the 20, okay? Anticipate a rise in volatility. This is you'd have to have two moving averages. When the smaller moving average crosses over the larger moving average, it means volatility is starting to increase. The stock is starting to move on the smaller time frames. That's why the the faster moving average uh, crosses the larger crosses over the larger moving average. So anticipate when there's going to be a rise in volatility. Calculate reward to risk or risk to reward, especially when you're going against the trend. For example, when I'm going playing something long that's climactic, the 20 MA is usually my target. So I can use it, knowing where the 20 MA is at, I can use it for target picking, and I can use it to calculate my reward to risk. And last but not least, you can use the moving averages to calculate reward to risk, uh, I'm sorry, to calculate relative strength to relative weakness, meaning if a stock is below the 20, for example, if we were to look at the market and look at a stock, if the market was, I mean, here's the chart of the Qs, right, above the 20, we can see on this time frame, on the 15 minute chart, is above the 20, uh, versus a stock that is in an uptrend and we were considering it long, like the LZB, we can see it below the 20. Which one has relative strength? I mean, which which is what which is stronger, the LZB or the QQQ? Obviously, the QQQ. And and if we were also looking at let's say two buy setups, let's say the you know, uh, let's see. I'm just looking at my charts. Let's say something like the ah, where where do we have a you know like the fit that is above the twenty but pulled back really deep, broke the twenty versus something that's not even pulling back to the 20 because it's that bullish. Does that make sense? Like maybe the LOW or more accurate would be something like um, like this, Fistly. Between Fistly and, and, um, and Fit, which one is stronger? Just based on the location compared to the moving average. Which one is stronger? Fistly, for sure. Does that make sense? So you can use it to also determine relative strength relative weakness all right what I personally do is I put the I have the market chart of the queues on multiple time frames just like that and then right below it the same time frame for the stock that I'm looking to trade so the the 15 minute QQQ right and then below it whatever stock I'm looking to trade this way I can compare relative strength and relative weakness right because I wouldn't want to play something long that has relative weakness to the market these are two different time frames but on my platform I have the one minute stacked above the actually the cues is at the bottom and the chart that I'm looking to do on multiple time frames is above so the one minute of the chart the stock and the one minute of the cues one minute uh, two minute of the cues two minutes of the, the stock that I'm considering five minute five minute 15 15 this way I can quickly spot the difference and the relative strength relative weakness between whatever stock I'm considering buying or selling versus the market all right 
So far, so good. Are there any questions? Go ahead if you have any questions. Um, okay, question. When we look at the larger time frames, basically we look at the trend of the 20 pointing up or down, not the color of the last bar in the larger time frame. Um, um, okay, uh, so let's see. When we look at the larger time frames, basically we look at the trend of the 20 pointing up or down, not the color of the last bar in the larger time frame. R Ravi, it's more, you know, it's I, I do look at the color of the last bar, but it's not that I look I'm looking at the color whether 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 to determine whether it's red or green. I'm looking at the pattern. So I do look at the I do look at the uh, the trend on the larger time frame, but I also look at what's happening on the larger time frame. This is more about multiple time frame a discussion about multiple time frames and multiple time frame alignment than it is a discussion about the moving averages. But let's just you know let's just take it a step further. And let's say we, you know, we were looking at multiple time frames here, okay? And let's go to an intraday chart, like the, let's say the five minute. And I was considering doing a five minute buy setup on, is there something that has a five minute buy setup? This time, in, this time of the day, I don't really use the five minute very much. I use the 15, by the way, the LOW looks nice if you want to do it. It's extended, that's the biggest issue. See that, it's extended. But the entry for this would be over 107.81. Stop low of the day. Whatever the low of the day is, just look it up. And then entry would be over 107.81. Now, so what I do is I, I compare the multiple time frames. So, so if I'm considering, let's say, doing that breakout on the 5, I want to make sure the 15 also looks good. What if the 15 minute was under the moving average right here? Would I play that 5 minute breakout? No, I wouldn't. Does that make sense? So if I so that's what I look at. I don't just look at the color of the bar. I don't just look at the the moving average. I do I do these things, but I but it's not only that. Okay. All right. Uh, okay. So let's continue. Um, if you can keep the commentary, please, to the presentation being discussed, because I try to read every comment. That would be helpful if you don't mind. Not a problem, but um, just want to make sure that we're, you know, I don't get distracted too much if you don't mind. Okay, now the 200 MA, 200 MA. We flatness is king. While the 20 is most powerful when it's trending, the 200 is strongest when it's flat. Think of the 200 MA as a floor to stocks above it. Okay, so that if a stock falls into the 200, it's going to act as support. Again, it's not going to be a concrete floor. It's not. Don't think of it as a concrete floor. Think of it as a trampoline. As a trampoline. All right. And um, think of the 200 as a floor to stocks above it and a ceiling to stocks below it. So as resistance, if you have a multi-bar run-up into the 200 MA. All right. I'm looking at my charts to see what's setting up. I'm liking that LOW the most. And also the PTD put in a buy setup. But it has a big, big stop because of the shakeout right here. So there's a couple of ideas right now that are, that are interesting. PDD and then LOW. I would prefer to do the LOW because the PDD has resistance not too far above right here. Okay, and the other thing about the the PDD is it's got a big stop because you have to put the stop under the move, under the tail, and then one more item would be the NRZ as a breakout, right? And then the other one is um, is the Fisley as a buy setup. So there's some buy setup. Looks like the market is okay. No, the market is not going anywhere yet. JMIA, right? Looks slower going if you have it available looks good to me short that looks the best at the moment jmia and then bizon one more time lower bizon lower short um okay so uh, back to this flatness is king 220 is most powerful when it's trending and 200 is most powerful when it is flat okay uh, a level floor is always preferable to a slanted one. Just remember that when it comes to the 200 MA. Okay, remember that. 
uh, it also acts as a line in the sand. In general, stocks trading above the 200 are being accumulated. Obviously, price wouldn't be above the 200 MA unless it was being bought because the 200 MA is the average of the last 200 closes, 200 bars. Uh, and so and so if the stock is above it, it means it's being bought in general, right? Stocks below the 200 are going through their distribu distribution phase. They're being sold. As such, do not, in general, do not short stocks above the 200 MA on that time frame. The reason why I underlined on that time frame, because you might think, well, don't short a stock that's above the 200. Uh, okay, I got that, but w which time frame? Does that mean I can never short a daily a stock that's maybe below the 200 MA on the daily chart, but is above the 200 MA on the five minute? Does that mean I can never play a swing short on a stock that's above the 200 MA on the five? Of course not, you can. I'm just talking about that one time frame. In general, you don't want to short it unless it's a climactic or it's a transition C. When a stock goes climactic, 100% of the time it's going to be above the 200, just about 100% of the time. Okay, on that time frame. The other time is, a co you know, that basic unit, when you get the transition C right here, that's also going to be above the 200. So those are two exceptions uh, of times when you can short even if the stock is above the 200. Okay? Similarly, do not buy stocks currently below the 200 MA. Support and resistance, when price is declining towards the 200, we already said that. And when price is rallying towards it, that's resistance. Especially true if the stock was extended. Especially true if the stock was extended and has put in multiple consecutive green bars to the 200 MA or multiple red bars down to the 200 MA. Here's some examples. See this? Gapped up and then got sold hard into what? The 200 MA. On the 5 and the 15. It's better when it's set up like this on multiple time frames. See this? on the 5 and the 15 at 1030 reversal time. Perfect. Climactic right into the 200 MA. A, a, a gap down and then a climactic, almost a climactic run up into the 200 MA on the 5 and the 15. Perfect. Especially when it's again on both, both time frames like this. Down, 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 wide range bar, big volume right into the 200 MA. Perfect. That's a long. Okay, that's a long. Where's the entry? Over that last bar's high. Where's the stop? Under low of the day. Or under that little green bar's low. Okay? All right. Use as a gap strategy. Here is a really, really cool way to use the 200 MA. Okay? And the 200 MA is, is called the granddaddy of them all. You know, is not, call, is not given that name for no reason. It's called the granddaddy of all moving averages. Use as a gap strategy. Buy at the open stocks gapping up just above a flat 200 MA on the daily chart, regardless of the quality of the gap. You can disregard the quality of the gap. You don't even have to analyze it. Most of the time, it will work. The vast majority of the time. Short at the open stocks gapping down just below a 200 MA, flat 200 MA on the daily. Again, regardless of the quality of the gap, novice, professional, tier one, tier two, almost doesn't matter. Wait for a pullback to the 20, 200 MA before, on the daily chart before buying a stock that gaps well above it. Wait for a counter rally to the 200 MA before shorting a stock that gaps well below it. Let me show you some examples and that will clear, clear it up. See this? Gap right to resistance, right? Doesn't matter. It's a buy. Just to the to above or just at that 200, 200 MA. See this? Just above the 200 MA also gapped above it and then bought, you know, you buy it. Just above it and then it continued for several days. Check th that out. I know I like it when it's flat like this. This would be, this is ideal when it's flat. Okay. But even when it's pointing up a little bit, that's okay too. That's okay too. Flat 200, gap up into resistance, doesn't matter. Got by, that's Tesla. When it gaps way above it, then no, obviously. You want to you wanna see it pull back to the 200 before buying it. And as you can see, it touched the 200 and bounced $1.75 or so. 
touch the 200 and then bounce a bit. Too big, above the 200, to the 200, you can buy it on a pullback to the 200. Uh, now, when it gaps into the 200, not above it, but into it, then you can wait for a pullback away from the 200 because the 200 is 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 resistance. Okay, is resistance. Uh, somebody's asking about the jade, the the Cree. Uh, I think it's good. It's okay, but look, this is not the typical way we play climactics. We try and pick the bottom on climactics, not on a transition A. And that's a transition A on the five minute. I like to play transition A plays mostly for swing trading, not for day trading, because they're tough for day trading. But yeah, that's okay. It already triggered though. Entry should have been over 49.33. So it's, it's already, you know, should already be in it. Again, it's okay, but not like something I would be uh, drooling over, okay? It's not that great, but it's okay. Again, when it gaps into the 200, you don't want to be buying it. You want to be looking for a pullback, and then you can buy the buy setup. And then nice big move, okay? And then when it gaps just below a flat 200, look, into support. Didn't matter. Didn't matter at all. Big sell-off. Under the Look at this. Slightly below the 200, so popped initially into the 200 and got rejected. See it? I mean, the 200 MA is, is something special. It really is. This was a really good gap, even though the 200 was not flat at all, because it ended the long-term trend. When a stock ends its long-term trend, usually that's a big deal. It usually gets sold hard. That's probably why the Cree got sold so hard today, because it gapped, it ended the, the uptrend. Uh, just under the 200, it initially popped, actually, and then got came back down and then got sold all right um, okay if amber hadn't distracted you Angela you would know that answer already <laughs> just kidding I said doesn't really matter whether you want to use uh, exponential or simple I use simple because that's what most people use and I want to be I want to read what other people are looking at I want to see what they're looking at because when we take trades you're basically we're not trading stock we trade people right we trade trade people all right so i want to see what they're what they're <laughs> what they're looking at well you guys were chatting while i'm doing the presentation if if i was in a classroom i would have thrown the the <laughs> eraser at you or something i'm totally kidding totally kidding all right <laughs> all right okay use as a breakout strategy this is for long term trading. Look to buy stocks in an uptrend that base at or near the 200 MA as soon as the rising 20 catches up. So again, here's the picture that I'm talking about. 200 MA and then a rising 20. Check it out. And the stock oscillating between the two. So equal highs, higher lows. Equal highs, higher lows. Where do you think it's going? You tell me. Where do you think it's going? Up. Does that make sense? So use as a breakout strategy, look to short stocks the opposite in a downtrend that's based at or near the 200 as soon as the declining 20 catches up, right? Very effect effective for long-term trend. Check it out. Most, I challenge you to go and look at stocks that are up a lot and look at how the trend started. I challenge you to look at, to do that because then you learn a lot. You learn how, at how trend, you learn about how trends start. And you will see, you will see that in most cases, the stock, you know, bases at the 200 for a long time before it eventually pops above it. I mean, just yesterday, I kid you not. I was looking at, I don't know how I came across it, Coop, C-O-U-P. It's trading at 143. In 2016 or so, I have a trade that made 2,500 bucks. 2000, I think 16, when this stock was at $10, would you believe it? $10. Now I can verify and, and look at the, the daily chart real quick, but maybe it was in 2016. I don't remember the exact year, but just a couple years ago, I mean, a few years ago, I'd have to go back, you know, but, uh, and, and if you look at how it started, it broke out over the 200 MA. 
Okay, and now it's at 140. So let's see what year that was at 10 bucks. Maybe it was maybe it wasn't 16. Well, that is 16. It's at 25, but now I have to add more data. You get the point. I don't need to go back that much. It doesn't matter. It was a t uh, yeah, LOW is triggering. LOW as a long. Looks good. So most long-term core plays originate, I mean, break out off the 200, just like that, just like this. Notice how the 20 started to point up, right? Same here, off the 200, and then off it goes. Look at that. Look at how tight it was. Broke out, and then broke out one more time right here. What a beauty. I mean, just look at this. What a beauty. I don't know why, but people have a problem with low price stocks. I have no problem at all. Give them all to me. Love them. Because they double, they triple in just days, not weeks, not months. Love low price stocks for long term trading. Because again, for swing trading and long term trading. Because they can really go. They can really go. People think it's they're risky. In fact, they're not risky for me. They're less risky. You know why? Because if I have... If I have a couple thousand shares of this, the worst that could happen is it goes to zero. Or if I have 5,000 shares, the worst, absolute worst, is zero and I lose the whole thing. If I have a stock and I have 1,000 shares of it and it's at 20 or $30, I can lose all $20. I know that's unlikely, but we just saw the, what was it, the FR, IFRX? Uh, IFRX, I believe. Gap down from 40, 37 to two bucks. To three bucks 280 just not too long ago in June see it in June two months ago so if anything they're less risky if anything than the high price stocks okay so notice just notice that 200 based at the 200 and then the 20 started to point up I call this the the cradle you know like the baby you're ho carrying the baby kind of a setup in this case you're doing it with your right hand I mean, it's just, does that make sense? Look at that. Gorgeous, gorgeous. Same here, based at the 200. And then look at that breakout. Okay? Look at that breakout. This is how most, you know, all these blue chip stocks, at some point, they were low price stocks like this. And then broke out and then became what they are today. Like the, the, the COUP that we were just talking about. Notice the 200 broke out. And then off it went. This uh, this was RYAM. I still remember it because I played it. Look at that. Flat 200. Stock based at it. Based at it. Based at it. Couldn't take it out. It took it out a little bit here. Notice the shakeout on volume. Notice how tight it got. And notice the moving average starting to point up. Beautiful, isn't it? Bam. So really, really nice. Any questions about this? Any question uh, about this? Uh, so let's take a look at the LOW on the daily chart. It gapped. So the question is, had low gapped to just uh, over the 200, was that an immediate buy notwithstanding the supply to the left? Or is that a bad example? No, I mean, if it was, I mean, that's kind of a flat 200. This is a small, chart so let me open it up yeah no i mean what i'm saying is you can do it if it's a flat 200 gaps just above it you can do it with regardless of the quality of the gap w would it have been would it be better would it have been better if this was a red bar and then a gap up here sure yes but you can do it at, look at this guys i can't make this up check this out check this out i just saw this 200 MA flat just under it. Does that make sense? You can do it blindly. I don't recommend trading blind, but you can almost trade this strategy without any, uh, you know, without paying any attention to anything else. Resistance, the quality of the gap, the, the market. Look at this. Beautiful. Now, this was way above, right? Way above. Look at SYY. Look at SYY. In May, gapped 
no, in February, gap. Look at how the 200 kept it from, you know, acted as a resistance. Got below it, ran up into it, and then got sold. On the on May 22nd, I guess is that right? May 22nd, SKY. May 22nd. Check it out. Look at that. Now, I mean, that's just so beautiful. Flat 200, rising 20, and then the breakout. And gap just above the 200. And check it out. I mean, look at this, guys. Look at this. Gorgeous. Does that make sense? Beautiful, beautiful. Most long-term breakouts, trust me on this. I don't like to say this word because... You know, I don't want you to trust me. Actually, I want you to verify. That's how you learn. But if if I may use say this, trust me on this. The breakouts that originate off the 200 with a rising 20 below are, you know, are the best. Or th those are the ones that result in long-term uptrends. Long-term uptrends. Okay. All right. W uh, let's see. Um, when well above i mean when it's it's a visual tom for example the question is like how far above the 200 do we have to wait if it's just a little bit above it do we have to wait then no but if it's far above it then you do now if it's a gray area like right here i mean right here i would say that's well above it but anywhere here to me would be let me just be more precise anywhere here would be just above it now, I prefer right above it, but anywhere in this box, I would say, would be fine. Anything above it would be too big. And anything way up here, I wouldn't even play it long without a pullback. Remember we said, we talked about the low this morning. We said, I can't do it. And I talked about Home Depot. That was way too big of a gap into resistance. In this case, also above the 200. Yeah. All right. Um, so the question is, wait for a pattern. You don't even have to wait for a pattern, okay? You don't even have to wait for a pattern. But if possible, you know, at least wait for a high low. Wait for some kind of a pattern because I'm I'm not, you know, I don't recommend blind trading. But the point is, you really want to look to go short if a stock gaps just below the 200 or just above the 200. Does that make sense? In general I only discovered this by the way not too long ago like in 2014 13 is when I discovered it yeah uh, uh, question is how do you get the slides uh, I, I, I don't think you can get the slides because those are my slides but you can get the recording okay all right uh, okay with that said let's go ahead any other questions about what I just covered any other questions about what I just covered? Let me know. All right. Uh, would the LOW qualify as a breakout failure? I don't think so. But remember, it wasn't like really terrific because it was extended. It was extended from the 20. But look, it still looks okay, I think. But I'm not in it. I'm not in it. Uh, slope of the 200 does that matter as I said you might be just logging in but as I said earlier flatness is king here it is I mean you can't miss it it's on the slide I don't know where it is here it is flatness is king so we want to see you know we want it to be flat as much as possible right while the 20 MA is most powerful when it's trending the 200 is strongest when it's flat all right. No, not a problem at all. Not a problem. Any other questions? Any other questions? Okay, great. If you have any questions, reach out to customer service, please. Any questions about how to get the recording or anything else, send them an email or give them a call. Thanks so much. I'm going to go ahead and end the recording right now, but I hope you enjoyed it. Again, if you're watching it on social media, be sure to hit that, that like button. Hit, you know smash it <laughs> and uh, and I'll see you I'll talk to you guys soon have a good day also if you're if you're not in the room already and want to join us in the open house link is in the description thanks